Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about EUI64 addresses. Rather than manually configuring the full IPv6 address on a router's interface, it can generate the full IPv6 address for itself if you enter the interface that you want to do this on and the slash 64 network prefix that is to be used. The host portion of the address will then be derived from the interface's MAC address, and the MAC address is always guaranteed to be globally unique. But a MAC address is 48 bits long, and the host portion of an IPv6 address is 64 bits long. So to derive the host portion of the IPv6 address from the MAC address, we need to make the MAC address longer. We need to extend it from 48 bits to 64 bits. The way that that is done is FF colon FE is injected into the middle of it. Also, the seventh bit is inverted. So looking at an example with our network here, let's say that we haven't configured any IPv6 addresses anywhere. And for an example, we're going to use EUI64 addresses on R1. So on R1, we're going to go on to the fast 0 slash 0 interface and say that the network prefix there is 2001 colon DB8 colon 0 colon 1 double colon slash 64 and tell the router to generate an EUI64 address. It will then automatically generate an address for itself on that interface with the correct network portion of the address. And then the second half of the address, the host portion, will be derived from the MAC address. So in the example here, we're not going to use one at the end. We're going to just have it automatically generated from the MAC address. We'll also do that on interface fast 2 slash 0 as well, which is on the 2001 DB800 slash 64 network. So looking at the commands, we go on to interface fast 0 slash 0 on R1, and we say IPv6 address 2001 colon DB8 colon 0 colon 1 double colon slash 64. So that's the network portion of the address that's going to be on that interface and then a space. And then we say EUI dash 64. And for interface fast 2 slash 0 IPv6 address 2001 DB8 0 double colon slash 64. EUI 64 and the router will now generate IPv6 addresses for itself on those interfaces. To check that it is working as expected, we'll first we'll check the MAC address that was on those interfaces. So we do a show interface fast 0 slash 0 and we can see that the MAC address there is CA01.2F24.0000. If we then do a show IPv6 interface brief, I can see that the address on fast 0 slash 0 is 2001db801, which was the network portion of the address that we configured. And then it's automatically configured the host portion derived from the MAC address. So that is C8 because the seventh bit is inverted. So it makes it C8 rather than CA. And then 01 and then 2F then the FFFE is injected, and then 24 colon 0. So you can see that it derived it from the MAC address, and the same thing happened for interface fast 2 slash 0 as well. So that's how EUI64 addresses work. If you configure this on a non-Ethernet interface on the router, like a serial interface, it will borrow the MAC address from the first Ethernet port. And it's not recommended to do this, okay? It, do not use EUI64 addresses on your router interfaces because if we look at the lab topology diagram here, here is where 
we have configured manual addresses. So you see that R1 is using colon one at the end of its addresses. R2 is using colon two. This is gonna make things much more logical and much easier for troubleshooting. You don't want your routers to have random IP addresses, which is what's gonna happen if you use EUI64 addresses. So if you're thinking, well, why tell us about EUI64 if it's never used anyway? Well, where it is useful is for your end hosts. If you've got an end host, like a normal desktop PC that is gonna be running IPv6, you don't want to have to configure IP, IPv6 addresses on every single end host. So we can use DHCP for that, like we do in IPv4, or we can use a feature called Slack which automatically generates the address on the interface. And we're gonna cover that in a lot more detail in a later lecture in this section. Okay, but for now, let's see how to configure it on a Cisco router. So in the earlier lab demo, we configured the interfaces on the, the link between R1 and R2. Let's now configure the interfaces between R2 and R3. So on fast one slash zero and R2, and on fast one slash zero and R3, I'll configure them with an IPv6 address, but I'll use EUI64 rather than using a manually defined address. So let's jump onto the lab. I'm on R2 here. And if I do a show IPv6 interface brief, you see that, okay, I've removed all of the IPv6 addresses for now. That's fine. We'll just do the interface facing towards R3 for now. So I'll go to global configuration, make sure that IPv6 unicast routing is enabled and the subnet on here is i'm just looking at that in my diagram i need to go to the interface first actually so let's go to interface fast one slash zero and it's ipv6 address 2001 colon db8 colon zero colon two is the subnet on the link between r2 and r3 normally i would put in the manually defined full ipv6 address here but I'll use EUI64 here. So at this point, I'll say double colon slash 64. That is the network portion of the address on this link, and then a space, and then EUI-64. And the address will be automatically generated for me. And then I'll do a no shutdown on here. And now if I do a show interface, fast one slash zero, you can see there is the MAC address. And if I now do a show IPv6 interface brief, then there is the automatically generated EUI64 address, which is based on the MAC address that is on that interface. Okay, I don't actually need to show you. You know that I could do the same thing over on the other side on R3 as well. And then I would be able to ping, I would have connectivity between R2 and R3. But if I went on R3 and I wanted to ping R2, I would have to ping it by this great big long address here. So don't use the UI64 addresses on your routers. It would be much better to use the manually defined address 2001 db8 0 2 double colon 1 or double colon 2 it's much more memorable and it's easier for troubleshooting okay so that was eui 64 you will see more of it when we get to that slack lesson coming up later in the section thanks for watching if you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now then you can enroll in my ccna gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.